Hi, everyone. I'm glad you could join us tonight for our Fringe 101, How to Prepare for Your Tech Rehearsal. Uh, my name is Kari Hagnes. I serve as the Board of Services Manager for the Winnipeg Fringe Festival. And I'm glad that you were able to uh, uh, reply to this invitation. This will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel. I'd like to introduce you to uh, Hugh Conacher, who is our production manager. And you may know him as a well-known lighting designer who has um, uh, designed lights around the world for all kinds of different companies. And he also is, of course, the production manager for the Winnipeg Fringe. And that involves uh, scheduling all of those tech rehearsals and giving you advice about uh, what not to do and how to be prepared for it. And um, also um, setting up all the venues uh, along with the outdoor or the, um, the uh, team that uh, is assembled and works for the Fringe to set up all these venues. Um, many of you probably have questions about your venues because they aren't all theater spaces to begin with. And um, our Fringe crew are uh, very, very experienced in turning these crazy spaces into black boxes. So I'll turn it over to Hugh now. Hi. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'd like to ask a couple of questions. And if you could put your answers, uh, either just simple yes or no, Y or N answers in um, in the, um, I'm, I'm crackly. Denise yeah. is telling me I'm crackly, yeah. am I? I don't know what to do about that. I haven't done anything different from what I was doing last night. Am I still crackly? Audio settings, default microphone. This one, is that better? Is that better? Does that work better? Yeah, okay. Cool. So, anyway, uh, and my video is pixelated. Like, it's totally fine, like two minutes ago. What happened? Uh, sorry, I have to go to settings again and see what I can do about that. <laughs> He's a brilliant technician, but that doesn't necessarily no. mean with his I'm computer. Not, <laughs> well, that's the funny thing, right? Anyway, so uh, I don't know. Did that fix anything? Carrie, no? Just go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. So I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's at my end. The picture on my screen looks great. So mm -hmm. it must be it's the video. It's the connection or something. Anyway, so just a quick show of hands in, in the comment section, please, about how many of you have never done a Fringe Festival before. Anybody? No feedback. So I guess no, I guess everybody's done a French festival before. That's awesome. Uh, so have, uh, okay, one has never done a, a French festival before. Um, and uh, that, so that's great. So basically I'm talking to people who, um, who have an idea of what's up uh, and we'll get to the people who uh, are brand new eventually. What I'd like to do first is what we're going to do is we're going to show you a couple of videos which actually explain things so much more in such so much more of an entertaining way than i can that i thought it would be a better way than than my doing it live so let's run the um uh the first video please denise hello everyone this video is for performers who are new to the winnipeg fringe theater festival to help you prepare for the most important event your tech rehearsal Step one, go to the performer toolkit and find your venue plans and specs. The plans will tell you the spatial details of your assigned venue for the purposes of blocking your show in rehearsal. The specs will tell you what the plans can't. What are the refocusable lights or specials, a description of the lighting as hung, crossovers, entrances and exits, sound playback available, and where you have to go to load in. If what you need isn't listed, you have to provide it yourself including any hookup or power cables or rigging stuff for things that will be hung from pipes. Check with Fringe Production to see if something is feasible. The Winnipeg Fringe Festival does not provide projectors. If you need a projector, there may be other groups in your venue also needing the same equipment and you can arrange to share a rental. Step 2. Prepare a script showing your lighting and sound cues and standbys which lets your technician know when sound and lighting cues are about to happen. 
Prepare your sound cues in an appropriate playback form for your venue. Get your set, props, and costumes all ready to go and arrange transportation and a crew to bring everything to your venue. Step 3. Loading in. Get to the loading area 15 minutes before your tech time. You won't get in earlier because other groups are in there before you or the venue technicians may be on their break, but have everything ready to move. Once the venue technicians meet you at the door, bring your gear and people into the space quickly. Prior to your tech, you should have rehearsed your setup and strike in addition to your performance. Each person in the company should have a task to complete as part of their pre- and post-show duties. Most fringe venues are essentially a black box, a cube with black legs and borders, which make rudimentary wings for entrances and exits. There will be a fixed lighting hang, as outlined in the specs, with certain lighting wash effects, like warm summer light, cool winter light, or cool night light. Step 4. Explain your cues clearly to your venue tech who will be helping you to achieve those looks, as well as learning your show during the tech rehearsal. While your stage manager and director are determining and teaching the venue technician the cues, the rest of your company should be setting things up on stage and backstage. Your venue tech will have given you a specially colored spike tape for you to mark where your stuff goes on stage. Once you have set your sound and lighting cues, if there is time, do a run with cues in place. Your ultimate goal is to have a good tech run of the whole show. Stand by lights 6 through 7 and sound 6. Sound and lights. Sound 6 and lights 6. Go. Light 7. Go. Step 5. Pack everything up and store it in the place that your venue tech shows you backstage. You will have 15 minutes at the end of your tech rehearsal to do this, which is what you will have after each performance. And that's it. Now here are some answers to some common questions. When do we show up to do our show? You show up 30 minutes before showtime. What's with that 45 minutes between shows? 15 minutes for the previous show to strike and audience to leave. 15 minutes for you to set up and 15 minutes for your audience to come in. Can you use liquids including blood? Yes, if you clean up and dry the floor thoroughly afterwards. How about breakaway glass or china? No. Balloons? Also no, as some people have latex allergies. Same with peanuts or peanut butter. Herbal cigarettes? Most venues discourage any smoking products, so get a fake cigarette or an e-cigarette. We're at the MTC warehouse, and as you can see, we're setting up venue six, and we're just going to go through uh, stage directions with you guys. So when you're doing your lighting design, you and the tech are on the same page and talking about the same area of the stage. So right now, I am down center. Downstage, you're coming down to the audience. When you're going upstage, you're going away. So that's upstage. And this is up right. So now I am down right, down left, I am up left, up center stage. So those are your stage directions. There's tons of really useful information on our performer toolkit online, including a handy FAQ page which we try to keep updated as we get more inquiries. If you have specific questions to your show or venue, please contact us. Thank you for watching. Happy Fringing. Awesome. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. I strongly encourage you to look at the performer info page on our website. It is stock a chalk full of useful information and basically everything that's ever happened in the Fringe Festival is, is documented there so that you can uh, uh, find out, get, so you can be self-sufficient in finding information for yourselves. If you can't find the information for yourselves on that page, you're more than welcome to uh, email me at the uh, thing going across the screen in a second and also Kari who uh, is the performer services person. So anything to do with the production aspects or technical aspects of the festival, your venue or whatever, that'd be me. And anything else, uh, like how do I get paid and, and uh, 
who do I show my vaccination certificates to? That'd be uh, Kari. Um, so that's that. Uh, I want to um, look at the stage management video next, please, Denise. And then we'll just have a quick look at that. It's another short video about how to prepare a prompt script for your stage manager. And then I'll go into a little bit more detail on, on uh, both of those things. Hi, my name is Catherine, and I'm going to talk to you about how to prepare for your tech rehearsal as a stage manager. What you need to do before your tech rehearsal is to sit down with your director and have what's called a paper tech. You're going to tech through the show on paper, go through your script and know where you want to put every sound cue and every lighting cue and what you want those lighting cues to look like. I usually start by creating a lighting cue sheet, which very simply is a table with four columns. First column, your cue number. You're going to leave that blank until your tech. Your technician, as they build the lighting cues, will tell you what cue number each cue is. Second column, where the cue happens. Where specifically in the script, what page, what line, what word you want those lights to change on. Third column, what does this cue do? Is it a blackout? Is it a transition light? Is it um, exactly what you want to see happen on stage? Be as specific as you can. The more specific you are, the easier it is for your technician to build a light that you're looking for. The fourth column is length of the cue. Is it a quick lighting change? Is it a snap? Zero seconds? All of a sudden there's light on stage? Or is it a very slow fade that the audience barely notices, like a 60 second cue? Put in a number there that you think might be right. It's very easy to change it and fix it during your tech, but just a rough idea is great. So once you've got your lighting cue sheet all done, you want to put your cues in your prompt script. Your prompt script is the script you're going to use to call the show. You're going to put all the lighting and all the sound cues into your prompt script, making sure that you've got a bit very specific exactly where you want to call each cue. Once Paper Tech is done, also go through your script and put in standbys. Standby is when you tell the technician, hey, get ready, here comes a cue. Standby lights five, or standby lights five and sound four. They don't know your show very well, so you need to let them know that a cue is coming up so that they're ready to hit the button as soon as you say the word go. It's best if you can bring your sound cues to your technician on a USB stick. WAV files are the preferred type of file rather than MP3. Also bring your cues on a CD because it's always great to have a backup. Now, if you don't have a stage manager for your show, here's a couple helpful hints for to help out your technician. Bring a clean copy of your script. Even if you've done this show in three other fringes, it's great for your technician to have a clean copy because the cue numbers might not be the same as the last time you did the show, or your technician might have a way of writing it that makes sense to them, and the previous technician's method maybe doesn't work for them. If you have anything specific in your script that is highlighted for your technician, technicians are working under dim light and often blue light, Choose a blue or a pink highlighter as opposed to yellow. Yellow doesn't show up under blue light very well. Because you don't have a stage manager calling your show and your technician doesn't know the show very well, it's extra important to make sure you get a run of your show done during your tech rehearsal so that your, your technician has the opportunity to see your show before there's a whole audience in the room. When you're calling a show, it's very important to be very specific in how you word your cues. You're going to say, stand by lights five and sound four. So they know to be prepared for a light cue and a sound cue. When it comes to actually calling the cue, you want to say, lights five go, or sound four go. Start with which board they're getting ready for, the cue number, and then the word go. You always finish with the word go because when you say go, they're gonna hit the button. So lights, five, go. I hope this was helpful and informative um, in helping you prepare for your technical rehearsal and I hope it goes extremely well. Good, so um, I'm gonna uh, just go through the, uh, the document that's online, how to prepare for a fringe technical rehearsal. A lot of that information is repeated from the video you just saw, but there's some stuff in here that just sort of has a bit more detail in it. While I'm doing that, 
Could you all please let me know in the chat if you are planning to use prop firearms in your show? If so, I'm going to go over the rules of and regulations and guidelines around that stuff. And if not, we're just not going to take the time to do it if nobody's interested. Uh, so let me know in the chat if you're using firearms, uh, prop firearms, of course. We don't use real ones uh, in, in your show. Okay. So uh, in terms of being on time for stuff, the first thing that um, uh, we, uh, we always say is five minutes or five minutes is the new black. So five minutes early is actually on time. Um, so your time is limited. If you turn up late, you're not going to be allowed to go late. So you're going to be wait, uh, you're going to be losing time out of your rehearsal. A lot needs to get done in the technical rehearsal. Most importantly, from your point of view, is that it is your technician's only opportunity to practice. What was that? To practice your uh, to practice your show before they have to actually do it with an audience in front of them. Uh, this is so, so. This this is one of the reasons why it's so vitally important from from the um, from the technician's point of view. Um, before you go in, before you move in, though, um, you should uh, you should rehearse everything about your show, including the setup and strike, uh, uh, before you go, because you have 15 minutes to set up your show and then 15 minutes to strike it at the end of the show. Every, every person in the company should have a task or several tasks to complete as part of their pre-show and post-show duties. Uh, you can't get into your um, into your uh, venue prior to your scheduled time. Um, it's just not possible. The technicians are busy, uh, you know, 15 hours a day, and um, that's that. However, uh, we do in advance provide the opportunity for extra technical time if you feel like you need it. There is a charge associated with it. Uh, the big companies, uh, I've got three companies right now in, in the bigger venues who have booked two or three extra hours of of tech time for themselves because they know they're going to get a better show if they if they do that and um, uh, they want to make their show their best their they put their best foot forward in their show. Um, so in terms of stuff that's provided in the venue, uh, we're kind of again it seems like we're really strict about everything, but we're not. We're actually really easygoing. If we have something there that does not belong to another company, we'll let you use it. It's fine. But you but what we are saying though is because these are all found space, not all found spaces, but most of these fringe spaces are found spaces. We don't necessarily know what's going to be in the venue that might be useful to you before we get in there. Some of the venues we don't even see ourselves until we start to build them, which is next week. Uh, so when you when you send me a note and you ask me for 27 chairs, it's like, yeah, you know what? I can help you arrange for the rental of that, but you're going to have to deal with it yourself, essentially. Um, uh, I can't provide you with tables because I don't necessarily know if there are tables in the place. Uh, one thing that we absolutely discourage is you walk into a thing, into, into, your, into your venue, and you see something that you want in somebody else's stuff. You can't touch it. It is absolutely out of the question uh, unless you talk to them and they come to us and tell us it's OK. Um, so be prepared to bring everything you need is the short is the short part of that tip. <laughs> and uh, uh, if you need anything complex or if you're from out of the country or out of town and you can't fly with something, do get in touch and we will do our best to um, uh, to help you out, but without guarantee that we can. Okay, let's move on. Uh, your technician is your best friend. That is so true. They are uh, they are everything to you. They are going to be the ones that make your show fly. Um, clear and consistent communication with them once you get into the venue is vital. You cannot get in touch with them before your tech time. That's what I'm for. If you have questions, uh, you need to address them to me in advance, and I will do my best to help you out. Um, right. What do you do in the tech time? I think that, that was pretty clear in what uh, Ray said in the video, but if there's any questions around that, feel free to ask them. Um, staffing, same sort of thing. If you don't have a stage manager, um, it's kind of important to, uh, again, help your technician. The technicians are all quite capable of running the shows if they're reasonably simple, but they need your help. They need a script. They need the cues written into the script in the way that Catherine was describing in the, um, excuse me, in the document, uh, in the movie that we watched. Uh, and, uh, it needs to be clear. It, the clearer it can be, the better. Um, 
what else can we say about this? I'm sorry, I'm going through this really fast because I'm assuming you can go back and read it. Okay, so now um, about sounds. The sound thing is something that's always um, a source of frustration during the festival because there's lots of people who turn up with, believe it or not, we had somebody last time, which was 2019, I know it was several years ago, turn up with cassettes and it's like, well, you know what? We actually had a cassette player and it still worked, so it was okay, but you know what, QLab, is the standard for sound cue playback. QLab is um, uh, easily available. It's a Mac only program, unfortunately. It's easily available online though, and there's a free version and you are encouraged to download it and set up your show file in advance before you come in. And then you can either run it off your own com computer if you want to, because we have the facility in every venue to plug in your own computer, uh, or you can uh, give the technician the file on the stick and they can load it into the fringe computer for QLab and um, uh, play it that way. So uh, that, that part's up to you. The more you can do in advance though, the, um, the easier it will be and the quicker it will be in, um, in, the, uh, uh, in the tech rehearsal. Um, so that's always the key with everything is the more you can do in advance, the better off you're gonna be when you get into the tech rehearsal. Um, suspended scenery. I'm going to ask you also, do, do any of you dealing with suspended scenery? If you've got anything that, uh, in, if you're in venue one, it's easy, um, but requires some preparation. Uh, otherwise, um, it's always best to bring the fishing line that you want to use or bring the, uh, 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 br bring brings black sash cord if you're going to hang it against the backdrop or something like that. So, so be prepared to, with, with the stuff that you think you need to, to, to hang it. Um, yeah, okay, so this is another thing that comes up a lot, is that directors in fringe shows think the time in the tech rehearsal is for them, and it actually isn't. Uh, your job, the director's job, should be done by the time you get into the rehearsal hall, uh, by the time you get um, out of the rehearsal hall and into the, onto the stage. Of course, there's adjustments that need to be made. We all know that. But really, the focus here is about the, uh, is about the technical aspects of the show. If you don't have a technical aspect of the show, um, uh, prepared and 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 property tech during the tech rehearsal um you just don't have a show um i'm going to talk about that again in a sec uh yeah so yeah part of uh, the final note there is that part of the um part of the uh the, the tech time involves your strike too so your strike doesn't start at the end of your tech time your strike finishes and your strike and storage time is part of your tech time i'm just going to say that we reserve, um, that's, I think that's all we need to talk about with this since it was pretty well handled in the in the video. Um, I'm going to say, though, that um, uh, in terms of the technical rehearsal stuff, if we feel as though you have not given us what we need in order to adequately uh, perform your show, we will insist on it, which means that we will bring you back in, assuming we can find time, which isn't always possible. We will bring you back in for overtime call, which will cost you money, or we will cancel your first show to finish doing the tech rehearsal. The onus is on you to make sure that we have what we need by the end of your allotted tech time. Uh, feel free to ask questions about that if that needs any clarification. Um, uh, I think that's all I have to say about that. Now, let me just look at the comments here. Did anybody say anything about um, uh, guns? A Nerf gun doesn't matter. We don't care about... So the, the deal with guns is this. Um, um, there is the, there, there's Dave Brown's uh, guide which uh, to, to gun, prop gun use in the Fringe Festival and generally on stage, which Dave Brown is, a, is, a, is an expert uh, gun person. He's uh, world-renowned for what, what he, for what he does, and he happens to live here in Winnipeg. And so we use him all the time for stuff. Um, his guidelines are simple and clear. If you have any questions about them, please email us and let us know. Uh, a Nerf gun is okay. It doesn't matter if it looks like a toy gun. There are some toy guns, however, that, that look real. And the way we need to differentiate between a toy gun that looks real and a real gun on stage is by painting the tip of the gun a bright color like orange or yellow or something like that. And that's just the, the sort of the standard of the industry so that it's clearly not a real gun. You don't want to be walking down the street to your show with your gun in your hand and somebody could call the cops on you. It's just not gonna be a good scene, right? Uh, BB guns are out of the question. We've had that come up occasionally. Um, um, that's all I have to say about guns since nobody seems to be using them. But again, if you have questions about any of this stuff, 
uh, put them, plop, plop them in the chat now, or, or if we don't get to it, send me an email later. So in terms of this, I'm just going to scroll quickly through the, um, which is over here, sorry, uh, the website and see if there's anything else I want to talk about. You should read all this stuff on the website. There's so much information here. You may think some of it doesn't apply to you, but actually it all applies to you, especially things like safer spaces, resources, and uh, uh, harassment discrimination policies and COVID policies these days. Yes, there are COVID policies, and yes, we will be following them. Uh, just in case you don't know this yet, everybody who's performing in the fringe is required to be vaccinated and um, required to wear a mask when in the theater, except if you're a performer on stage performing, then you don't have to wear a mask. Um, uh, questions about that can be addressed to Kari. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the venue specs that are online here are constantly being updated. So if you've looked at something and uh, you think you know what it is, before you make a decision based on that, go back and look again just to see if it's been updated. Um, sometimes that happens. Um, it happened today, for example, with, um, I think it was venue three and venue four, uh, and venue two as well, actually. Um, yeah, so there we are. Basically, we're here to help you fulfill your vision, and we will do what we can uh, to, to, to do that. It has to be legal and it has to be within the realm of reason, but we'll certainly work our best to uh, to to help you do what you need to do. Kathleen Henry puts a question here saying, I need to use headsets for singers with solo songs. I put them on my tech form. Can you give me uh, advice on best place to rent or am I allowed to use the ones that MTC main stage has? That is our venue. Uh, well, as, is it on the list, um, Kath Kathleen? Go check out the list. Really? Uh, the uh, answer, the, the quick answer is no, it's not on the list, so therefore you can't use, there is nothing there at MTC that you can use. And yes, you do need to rent them. Um, here's what I have to say about headsets is if you haven't been rehearsing with them, don't use them in, at the, on the main stage. It'll be a disaster. Or in any theater, for example. You need to be rehearsing with that stuff for all of your rehearsals before you move into the theater. Um, and that means you need to have um, the headsets, of course, the microphones, and you need to have a sound system that you can make to hear them through. And you need a sound engineer to do all the mixing for you. So it's a big deal. Most of the companies that come in and do, um, um, uh, most of the companies that come in and do the, um, do headset mics uh, on stage have been doing that. <laughs> Kathleen, stick in the chat what your company name is, please. Um, I haven't got that fi that file open right now. I'll, I'll I'll open it and see if I can find you. Maybe I don't want to stop talking and bore people though while I look things up. So tell me what your company name is. Um, Okie dokie. Fifty minute strike time after the tech. In addition to no, it is included as part of it. That's what I just said. Um, the uh, the strike time is part of your 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 uh, your tech time. Um, I just said that, uh, nerf guns we've talked about. Cool. Well, keep the questions coming because, um, uh, I'm kind of running out of things to say because I was hoping that this would be an opportunity for people to, uh, ask their own questions and, um, wall street theaters that you Kathleen. Yeah. Rent headsets. There you go. So, um, yeah, you said in your tech form that you're going to rent headsets four or five and do some changes throughout. Ensemble do not require headsets. So you know what you could do? I mean, if, if it has to be headsets, like aesthetically, you really do need to get them in advance and work them. Don't count on your tech time for that for that to be enough time for you to do anything. Um, uh, in your case, when is, your, when is your, I haven't got the right file open. When is your tech time? Let me just find out. Uh, I'm on version six of the Tech Times now. Your Wall Street Theater, you're on, uh, Kathleen, you're the first up in, t in tech world. If you wanted to add some overtime, we could do that because you were actually the only thing being teched that day. So, um, so contact me about that if you feel you'd like to do that. I think whenever you're using live mics in a show, it's the smartest thing to do. Um, PMF Productions. Uh, venue 5 does have QLab. Um, they, uh, oh, Venue 5. New Venue 5 is, is, is Planetarium. Yes, it does have QLab. Um, 
I'm just going to check and see what it says. I'm surprised that it says CDs. Venue 5, uh, if you look at the uh, Fringe Performer Info web page, it says QLab version 3 on it. Then you click on the tech specs, and it is out of date. All right, I'll make a note of that. We'll get that fixed. Um, uh, all the QLab, I think the QLabs for most of the things are listed actually on the web page itself. Um, yeah. Uh, Performer Toolkit. Oh, there it is. Yes, you just put the link up. Thank you, Denise. So uh, who else has a question? Uh, uh, while we're waiting for some other questions to come in, I'll do, I can say a couple more things. The Fringe is a lot of fun. You're going to get the most out of it if you... Well, let me rephrase that. You're going to get as much out of it as you put into it. If you, um, if you uh, go out and meet people and hand bill with people and talk to people in the beer tent and in lineups and all that kind of stuff, you're going to attract a crowd. That's the way it's done in Winnipeg. Other fringes are different, I know, but the Winnipeg fringe really is a personal one. It's about contact. It's about talking to people. It's about, excuse me, making yourself seen um, and... Um, and just getting out there and, and, and connecting with people is about connection. Um, that's the way tickets are sold here, I think. And this year, for the first time, all the tickets are available in advance. We've never done that before. Um, we're doing it partly because of COVID and partly because we've always wanted to. Um, and um, uh, that, that doesn't mean there won't be tickets available at the door um because if they're not sold in advance I think, I think the advanced sales cuts off four hours prior to the show mm -hmm. and so um up until four hours prior to the show uh is available online and uh in advance say uh, ad advanced tickets at mtc and after that uh you have to go to the door to get them so if there's tickets left you can certainly get them there hi carrie hi i have a couple of things to you just based on uh from what you've been talking about one of the things uh when we were back the Early on, when we watched the video on the prompt script that Catherine Ball, the state, local stage manager, uh, starred in, um, she talked about the prompt script. And we have examples of prompt scripts in the toolbox. There are different ways of doing the prompt script. She has her way. There are a couple of other uh, examples to show people um, what a prompt script can look like. Yes, Denise has just put one up there. That's very simple. It's everything typed in. And then there's... Um, there's other prompt scripts which are handwritten, which is kind of what Catherine Ball, yes, like this. Um, one of the things that uh, is talked about, about how the script should be on one side of the binder and a blank page on the other side. You can see where the holes are in that um, so that there can be lots of space to write notes. Yeah. So that the script is on like one side and a blank page on the other side so that there's a lot of room for writing notes uh, about cues. The other thing that I wanted to bring up, Hugh, is you're talking about the, how the technicians get to learn your show. And uh, I think that maybe the Winnipeg Fringe is unique in that you have a de dedicated technician. You don't have technicians changing. That's not actually necessarily true. It depends what oh. venue you're in. Okay, I'm Sorry. glad I asked then. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, in many venues, uh, that that was the way we did it here for years. In many venues where there are um, uh, different, where the venue itself has different kinds of requirements, we allow the technicians to either choose shows and then stick with the shows through the course of the festival, or sometimes they work in shifts. So um, they you'll see them all over the place. Um, yeah, sorry, Car Kari, go ahead. No, I just wanted I just wanted to reinforce uh, what you have been saying, and that is the technician is your best friend because they become huge fans of the shows that they work on, and uh, they really That's want true. you to be successful. Yeah, and we, we actually do a thing. Um, you know how the, uh, in the public forum there is all sorts of you know noise about oh this is the best show of the festival and you know these are the top 10 picks and blah 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 all that nonsense we do it in the tech world as well yeah. so the technicians have their favorite shows in every venue and they actually we actually put up a list it's not for public consumption it's <laughs> private but that gives us uh through the uh the extensive knowledge of the technicians the ability to tell our friends well in venue five so and so says that this is their favorite show yeah. and that sort of thing too so it, it applies even to yeah. uh, in, in everything and it's all in, it's all meant to be in fun of course um that's right 
uh, is not is not meant to be taken too seriously. But it is a good thing because people ask me all the time. So what what are you going to go see? Well, that's also how I decide what I'm going to go see is what what's recommended to me by by the technicians or also if I have friends or, or people from out of town who I know I've known for years that are coming, I go see their shows too. Um, and let's anyway. give a shout out to the volunteers. You got your venue team leaders yeah. who are also your very very good friends. Yes. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Uh, a couple more questions over here. Keep them coming. Uh, is there glow tape? Yes, there is glow tape. Um, many, uh, what venue are you in? Um, I can answer you more specifically. Uh, oh, in every comment, if it's a question about a venue, just please tell me the venue number so I don't have to ask again, because it's, uh, it's important for me to be able to tell you what's happening specifically in your venue. Uh, but the technicians will have some glow tape. Um, they won't have a lot of glow tape. We don't like, we don't encourage a lot of glow tape because it looks horrible in blackout. So we do our best otherwise. Venue five. Okay. In venue five, you actually won't need glow tape. Uh, although, uh, because of the stage is small enough that, um, that, uh, yeah, I suspect it'll be fine, but they'll have some that you can use though. Um, good. Uh, Kathleen, Henry, you need to send me an email requesting that, please, okay? And tell me how much, and I, we can talk about what it costs and all that kind of stuff. Um, indifferently Reformed, question about venue one. How easy, for, is, how easy is it for an actor backstage to go around and into the audience without stepping off the stage itself? Okay, that's, there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, if, if, if you know, do you know MTC? Just hit a quick response in the in the chat there if you know mtc if you look at it from the uh, from the audience's perspective there's these things called calipers that are on the sides of the stage and you can come you can break through the fourth wall so to speak onto the calipers and then walk into the audience without having to jump off the stage or from both sides of the stage you can go off the stage through a doorway and onto the calipers again mm -hmm. or you can go backstage, up the stairs, and um, and and into the audience through an audience entrance as well. So yeah, there's multiple ways to get from the stage to the audience. Uh, short answer is yes. <laughs> uh, okay, this is this is an excellent question. I'm glad somebody has asked this because I, I'm uh, we haven't got this is something we've been talking about too. Uh, do, Carrie, uh, Carrie, do you have an answer for that question? Pre-recorded land acknowledgement. I wouldn't be surprised because yeah, okay. we have the pre-recorded cell phone announcement. So yeah, I do have an answer for that know. question. Is is that we're going to have yes, MTC has a has a a cell phone. Sorry, both a cell phone announcement, which is sponsor motivated, and we have to run, and uh, also we can do a a land acknowledgement. However, I think that an MTC land acknowledgement defeats the purpose of a land acknowledgement. A land acknowledgement is meant to be a personal thing. It's meant to be how you, as uh, a person who resides in this world, uh, feels about uh, and, and wants to acknowledge the, um, the, the wrongs of the past and all that kind of stuff. So we would encourage you to do your own land acknowledgement. If you record it, we can run it as a sound cue and absolutely will. We'll have to um, listen to it before we can do it publicly to make sure there's nothing that, um, uh, well, is inappropriate, let's say. Um, but uh, well, I would encourage you to, uh, to, to do your own land acknowledgement and make it personal. And you can do it as part of your show too. I mean, it often happens that people stand up on stage and just say what they have to say, and um, it's a heartfelt thing. And um, and then they just say, "Move into the show." So if you want to do that, you can do that too. Okay, Kathleen, I see your note there. Thank you. We'll talk. Does anyone have any questions that uh, aren't necessarily technical? Um, we're moving into the time I know that I've been hounding everybody to get their names in for uh, performer cards, for example. And uh, this year it's been especially kind of confusing because we're also asking for proof of vaccination, which most people have sent in for us. And uh, we need proof of vaccination before you're allowed into your venue, even for your tech rehearsal. Yeah. So I'm hoping, especially for local companies, um, that uh, I can have you checking in the week before the fringe so that I can give you your performer cards and also your uh, your program. And I can also check your information about uh, how you will be paid, um, you know, what the name on the check is going to be. 
Um, I know these are just administrative details that you probably don't want to think about, but uh, it is something that we do have to uh, take care of. Um, you're probably worried about promoting your show. If you are not a Winnipegger, you may have heard that other fringe festivals are not allowing handbills, but Winnipeg Fringe does allow handbills. Winnipeg Fringe is a very face-to-face -face fringe. Um, we are very proud of the fact that people love to buy tickets at the door and they love to meet performers and they, uh, they love um, talking to people about their show, um, unlike other cities where that isn't quite as popular, but Winnipeg is just that kind of town. So we will allow handbills. We don't want them left loose on picnic tables where they can blow away and just become garbage. Um, same thing for posters. You know, uh, we certainly have poster walls, but um, we we it doesn't look good when they all get caught in the rain and got, start pulling off. So, you know, be judicious about how much uh, money you're spending on having posters printed and uh, maybe get a few that are really high quality laminated so that they don't come down in the rain. And um, be judicious about how many handbills you're having printed as well. Now, for those of you outside Winnipeg, or I guess even inside Winnipeg, um, you can have your material, printed material, sent to the Manitoba Theatre Centre, care of me, and I will keep it for you in the Performer Services kiosk. Um, you can find our address on any of our uh, material. And uh, what else? What else have I forgotten, Hugh? Well, I think that I, I, I'm going to reiterate two things that you said, uh, the, uh, uh, and, and a new thing. One of the things that I'm trying to talk up with the people I know who are doing shows in the festival is that uh, put a QR code on your posters of where they can get more information. Um, and, and then you don't actually even need handbills. You don't need many handbills because you could have one handbill that you did or one thing that you show to people with a QR code on it and they can just zap your QR code. So as a potentially, for those of you who want to be more green minded, it's potentially, potentially a way to get around the idea of 10,000 flyers flying around Gold Market Square in a rainstorm, yeah. which is something yeah. none of us like. Um, the other thing I'm gonna, I want to emphasize is the vaccination thing. You won't be allowed in to the theater unless you're vaccinated for your technical rehearsal. So just know that and don't tell me I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, and so, and so uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you uh, that, that also includes anybody who's helping you. If your mother's yeah. and father are coming and helping you loading in props and stuff, they also need to be, uh, show us their, their vaccination certificates. And the way we're dealing with it, because I don't want, we don't want the technicians to actually have to police that. And we don't want to have to police it at all, to be honest with you. But, but um, the way we're dealing with it is, is that the people who have performer cards is, uh, will have, have them because okay. they have yeah. shown carry their, uh, their vaccination certificates and, and provided all the information that's necessary for that. And so if somebody has a performer card, they're fine to come in and do whatever. If they don't have a performer card, we'll ask them for a vaccination certificate if they can give us one on the spot and, uh, and ID as well, of course, because that's what you have to do. And if they can, that's fine. And if they can't, sorry. Stay at the door, hand things yeah. over. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, <laughs> Good. So anybody else have any other questions um, or, or uh, Kari, anything from you? Or? Well, again, not technical, but I know that it's something that yeah. we're talking about in the office, you know, now these days. And that is um, people like to set aside complimentary tickets for friends and they're called performer comps, I believe. And uh, information about how to book those comps will be coming out very soon. Uh, there'll be an email, you'll be given a code and you will book your comps through uh, online booking of tickets and that information will be coming out soon so yeah. so we'll give you 30 seconds to um, put another question in there if you want to and otherwise thank you very much for coming tonight mm -hmm. and um uh we look forward to actually seeing people in person for the first yeah. time in i can't remember how many years well 2019 so a long time um so welcome everybody. I hope you have a great time and don't hesitate to get in touch if you have questions. Okay, and differently reformed. Okay, this is an excellent question. I'm glad you asked it. We will cut you off and turn the lights on if that happens. Yep, short answer. Does that need a we, we need 15 minutes to get people out of the building and the next group is coming in. Yeah.
So it's and it's and it's not it's not just about you, right? It's not just mm -hmm. about us being assholes either. It's about it's about the it's about the patrons, right? Many, many, many of our patrons book shows back yeah. to back. So they need to get out, they need to get to walk to the next venue, get to their next show in, in, in order to get a decent seat. So that was absolutely not okay. And we will cut you off. Yeah. And there won't be an end to your show. You're allowed to run a little shorter if you want. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, but again, we don't we don't encourage that either. And, and and you know, this is a funny thing. So this is this is this is one of the ways that people try to game the French, right? So they say that they've got a ninety minute show, but their show's actually sixty minutes, and they want extra setup time. We don't let oh, that happen, no, either, right? No, so this no. is the way that people try to play to, to game mm -hmm. us. And you know, I'm sorry, we can't do that either. Right. No, that's if bad. your show, if your show changes time, we, under, we all understand that we're not going to be complete, you know, completely nasty about it. But but um, but we do need to ensure that the festival runs like clockwork. There is only one exception to the late start to the starting on time rule, as far as I'm concerned. It, it and it is completely up to the technician's discretion. Um, and it is that if somebody has an accessibility need that requires them to take a little bit more time to get to their seats and it means that we start the show late to allow that person access mm -hmm. to the theater that's the one reason why we'll start late and that's mm -hmm. the only reason why we will start late um but thank you for asking that question and differently performed that was an excellent question anybody else uh, should i count down again in my in my head or should we just be done <laughs> I'll say thank you, Hugh. Thank you, Hugh. Okay, well, thank you, Kari. Thank you, Denise, in the background. <laughs> yes, thank you, Denise. <laughs> and I guess that's it. I All right. One, Thanks, one thing I will add is that in the uh, opening video, uh, we have a new festival manager. This this uh, movie was produced three or four years ago, and Jen Cheslock has moved on. And uh, Tori Pop is now our festival manager. And you've probably had a lot of emails from her. Um, Festival manager, is that her name? I guess it is. Anyway, she's Chuck's uh, second in command. And her email address is ppop at winnipegfringe.com. I'm sure you all have had emails from her. Ppop, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Ppop. Ppop, yeah. It's kind of like K-pop, but not. It is. Uh, okay, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Don't, don't hesitate soon. to get in touch, though, if you've got questions. That's, that's right. The, that's and if you don't know who to send the question to, you send it to me, and then I send it to whoever might have the right answer. We'll get For back sure. to you. Yeah. Okay, awesome, folks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye.